Today was um, Auntie Jean's uh, African market, but at the same time, we collaborated with Auntie Jean in terms of organising this community meeting about the forthcoming African Emancipation Day March that is taking place on the 1st of August. So we were literally giving information about the practicalities of the march, the program, what people can expect, how they can get involved, also what the aims and objectives of the march were. Um, we tried to have some discussion with those that were in attendance about what have been some of the weaknesses, what do people think, why do people think that we haven't been more successful in our objectives and so forth, and encouraging space for critical kind of self-analysis and evaluation because we are an action learning community, meaning that we're learning to do things better through doing it, yeah? We try things, we might philosophize, we might intellectualize, but what really matters is that, you know, the on the ground stuff that we do. And uh, one of the issues that, can't, that came out very strongly is the fact that we have not succeeded as yet in making reparations an everyday thing in terms of it being made relevant to the everyday struggles, campaigns, causes, and organising efforts that our people are engaged in, whether it's around um, dealing with the disrepair in schools, um, dealing with the disrepair in our families, whether it's you know family building stuff, community building work, or tackling uh, employment discrimination or whatever the issue may be. So we literally have an army of our people who are organizing to try and bring about some type of change but are not necessarily seeing reparations as being anything to do with what they are struggling to bring about that's a problem and as organizers we have to be aware of that problem which we are we have to find ways in which we can close the gap between our people and ourselves and it means that we have to go to where our people are at. We have to go down to their level. We have to have the patience and the humility to also learn from our people, um, look at what they're trying to achieve and engage in kind of dialogue with them about how they can apply a reparations frame or you know, perspective to tackling the issue that they are here to bring, you know, they are seeking to bring about. Okay. Because a lot of people might say, what's the point of marching? Doesn't make no sense. Why are you marching for? What's the point? So, that, well, yeah, what's the point of marching? First of all, the march is not just a march. The march has five aims, including it, it's got an aim that relates to holding the British state and other perpetrators uh, responsible for the Ma'angamizi, which is the key Swahili term for African Holocaust. And that, I'm not just talking about what happened to our foreparents, I'm talking about the Ma'angamizi as it's manifesting today. So, the prison industrial complex, uh, racial profiling, uh, so called black deaths in police prison and psychiatric custody, land grabs in Africa and other places where we are, gentrification in the areas where our people inhabit. Those are current manifestations of the Ma'angamizi and there is an external obligation as well as an internal obligation of ourselves. The external is what others owe us, the internal obligation is what we owe ourselves and actually the primary focus is on what we owe ourselves in terms of the responsibility we have to be the change that we wish to see because people who have oppressed us cannot provide the answers but at the same time we can't let them off the hook we have to keep on reminding ourselves and reminding them that we haven't forgotten because uh, you know our ancestors have suffered and different lineages of our family have also suffered um, the circumstances that we find ourselves in today the inequality that we face the fact that many of us struggle to even earn the basic income to support ourselves and our families, the huge wealth gaps we have between African and Caribbean nations and, and so-called uh, European nations, all because these nations are still benefiting from the rich uh, resources that come out of our motherland. You know, there's been uh, a report by War on Want um, that talks about the new colonialism. There's also another report called Honest Accounts, and they both speak to the trillions and trillions of dollars 
that are extracted from Africa. So we have our people being uh, gentrified, being forced to live like sardines, literally, in tower blocks that are burning down. And, and we are yet denied space, space to grow, space to organize, space to continue our families, space to continue our culture as any other group. Not only are we denied that space here in the UK where many of us live, we're also being that, denied that space in our homelands because there's extensive recolonization of land. So our people are surviving on barrels from and, and, and so-called charity and aid, um, and they're, they're surviving on remittances from family members. We have members of our family literally dying, crossing the Mediterranean, dying to get to Europe. That is a manifestation of the Ma'an Gurizi. So why we march is to raise awareness of all these manifestations of the Ma'an Gurizi today, and then to show the historical um, genesis, if you like, of these contemporary manifestations and to then if you like through our awareness raising help raise the consciousness the political consciousness the legal consciousness and the cultural consciousness of our people as to what our entitlements are but what our responsibilities are to also ensure that we do not loot our freedom account and the freedom account of our children and our children's children. Because each generation is really supposed to leave the earth a bit better than what they found it. And what we're seeing is that the earth is getting worse. What we're handing on to our, our children is not really a legacy. And we have to change that. So we march to really highlight our plight to really raise awareness globally and first and foremost to show our people that there is a constituency of African people in the UK that are organising around this issue, that are amplifying the voices of resistance that our people are engaged in, both within the UK and outside of the UK, including in our homelands, and to actually, if you like, represent them. So we are, if you like, engaged in a process of street action, which is about dramatizing our cause. It's about stopping traffic. It's costing the taxpayers money. Um, it's costing, you know, in terms of policing, it, they, it spend, they have to spend a lot of money, if you like, to police this march. We are making a statement. It is a protest. But it's not a protest where we're just expecting other people to do things. This year, we've deliberately focused focused on the theme of promoting the reparatory justice change we are organizing to bring about. The operative word is we are organizing, meaning we have to become agents again. We have to become masters of our own destiny. And even though others have an obligation to correct the harm, we have to be in the driving force of that. We have to show that we are capable of re-establishing ourselves, you know, it starts with the interpersonal relationships that we have. It starts with the kind of repair work we're doing in our families. There's so many broken families, broken relationships, fathers not seeing their children, some mothers not seeing their children, the extended family being, you know, cut apart. We need to bring the family back because every strong nation is built on strong communities and strong communities are built on strong families so this is the self-repair work that we have to be engaged in and we actually talk about community repairs because a lot of the problems that we face come about as a result of our powerlessness and also our lack of an ability to come together collectively around the you know strategic interests uh, and, and we are in the process of cor correcting that. So the march is really not only a protest, it's also an opportunity for us to meet together to showcase the positive works that we are doing. And in particular, we are uh, inviting and interested in those people who are running campaigns, who are literally engaged in the everyday resistance against the Ma'anga Mizi, but they might not come to a political meeting. They might not even classify themselves as being 
involved with the reparations movement. The people who are the community builders, the educators, the community development workers, the people who are engaged in helping to grow our food. This is part of the repair. And these are part of the skills, services, and, and, and knowledge that we need to have in order to maintain our freedom. And not just to survive, but also to thrive and to project the kind of future that we want to have, not just for ourselves, but for our children and our children's children. So we march in protest, but we also march to showcase the work that we are doing from the ground up. And the key thing about the march is it is a grassroots leadership initiative. We are promoting the direct work that our people are doing, advocacy work, service provision work, community building work, that is about the solution that we don't hear enough about. We hear a lot about the problems. We hear a lot about what we're not doing. We hear a lot about disunity. We don't hear enough and we don't profile enough both organisations, groups, collectives, even movements who are doing good work, who have good ideas, who have some of the answers that just need more support, sometimes need more resourcing. So a day will come when we will have to show actually we we can do our own we can do our own schools, we can build our own this, we can do our own that. But we have to base it on evidence. We have to base it on the work that we know is being done, the skills and the knowledge that we know many members of our community already have, and those projects, programs, and services that are reparatory. Reparatory. They are about repairing the harm. Yeah. Why is that important? What's the danger of us not doing that as well? The danger of us. I mean, I'll start with why is it important first. I think it was Alice Walker who had this fantastic uh, quote, if you like, that activism is my rent for living home on this earth. Yes, um, even in African tradition, um, in, in many systems, in particular the, the Kemetan system, we talk about we are here not only to reap where we haven't sown, but we're also here to sow. And we're here to ensure that we leave our homes, our families stronger, and the environment in which we live better than what we found it. So activism is, is our, if you like, duty. It's our duty to ourselves, but it's also showing gratitude to those who have gone before us um, our, in our families, our mothers and fathers, our grandfathers, our grand, uh, grandmothers, our foreparents who struggled, many who have become now invisible to history, but who were early freedom fighters, who sacrificed so much in order that we could enjoy some of the freedoms and the privileges that we enjoy today. And so we as a people come from a community, uh, you know, a people as I should say, that that believe in reciprocity. So we all have a responsibility not only to take and benefit and to talk about the rights that we have, we equally need to talk about the, the duties and the responsibilities that we have to self, to family, to community, to nation and to society. So that's why activism is important. And there's still so much wrong. I mean, what happened to our people has been going on for centuries. It's not going to change overnight, but each generation takes us a bit closer to that final point where we can actually live dignifying uh, uh, dignified lives as African people, um, with our own is benefiting from our own resources, not from handouts from others, being self-determining, um, not being afraid to be free, not being afraid to actually think for ourselves and to rely on our own efforts and our own labour and our own connection to each other. And so activism is really important in terms of bringing about the changes big changes, but also small changes that we want to see. We should all be activists, but we should be activists in terms of our families, and then it, 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 you know, it can go out from there, because it's not just then about just fixing your family and thinking, oh, I'm doing it all right here, because we have to live somewhere. And what happens when we step outside of our doors and we deal with the disrepair? So then that should actually encourage us to want to do more for those that are not necessarily part of our family, because that is then our human obligation to each other. Because ultimately, and it might sound cliche-ish, 
we have to be the change that we want to be or we want to see. And we can choose that path. We know what has been done to us. We know where we've been wronged. We know where we've experienced injustice, but we have a choice. Even when all of that is happening, we have a choice. We can do or die. We can change or we can keep maintaining the status quo. And so activism is about making the choice to be the change and to make what changes that we can. And when we start making the changes amongst ourselves, then our, our whole environment changes because people get affected by the changes that we make.